This week we got some awfully inspiring and good news about Mega Packs. Deployments are going up. They are already up. They're going up further still. There's a lot more revenue coming in, and it uh, is generally pretty exciting. I got uh, my good buddy Herbert here. A little bit blurry, but it'll come in and out. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> From Brighter with Herbert, a fantastic show. I'm Brian. Welcome to Future Aza. <laughs> So, Herbert, uh, you caught the earnings call, and there was so, so, so much to cover. But one thing that stuck out to me, and uh, I'd seen this coming, I choreographed it a bit, was slightly better numbers on the revenue. Margins up to 24%, which is something that I and others had anticipated because of the lumpy uh, pay schedule. They don't get paid right away. They get paid a bit more over time as it uh, reaches completion, basically, when it gets its final permitting and is actually electrified is when you get the rest of the revenue. How are you feeling about deployments so far? You're talking about energy? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Energy deployments, is, I think it's it's a great story that people are still not quite, um, you know, recognizing. They're now reporting it, but they said all the right things they needed to say, right, at the earnings call. They talked about that we're on track to doing 40 gigawatt hour of mega, pack, mega factory in Lathrop, California. That's the full capacity. This is their highest margin business that they have. And they're going to expect to have a, you know, it grew a 7% year over year and pro gross profit up 140% year over year. And the other thing that was very interesting was when they talked about how they have visibility, right? These are long-term contracts. They actually know when they need to develop these mega packs and by when to deliver the contracts. So when they, when they forecast this out for you, this is a lot more uh, stable in terms of what they can see already and how they can see this is growing and they're expecting uh, growth next year. Although again, don't expect that the margins or the revenue will be straight line up or exponential because it's going to be lumpy because of the way that they recognize the way the contracts work is that it's like based on milestones as they hit these milestones, then they get it in. And there's going to be certain quarters where there's no milestones to hit for these things. And so it's going to be like that. That is exactly right. Um, and these are big products. It, it was like in the early days when Fremont was the only factory and ships would only leave sometimes. Big, uneven, lumpy deliveries. And this is what we're seeing. Now, did you hear that uh, they expect it to grow over the next 12 months? Did you hear that? Yes. <laughs> what do you mean? 70%. 70% they expect it to grow. These are big, big numbers. Uh do you see any potential roadblocks or competition coming on that might make it challenging? I ask because CATL yeah. staying on top of the battery game. Yeah. Yeah. It's no, no, no. I mean, that's not a competition, right? I mean, batteries and energy is the new oil. It's the new currency, right? Like today, it's AI is a currency. But in order to power those data centers, everybody's buying chips like crazy to power data centers. There's not going to be enough energy. And so none of this is competition. Like it's ridiculous the, the, the amount of data warehouse, data centers that they need to build and every one of them is going to need energy. So and, yes, and backups and great. Yeah. So the trick is with these energy systems, Tesla doesn't make the batteries, they buy the batteries. And they're buying the batteries from CATL. Now, this is based on 2023 numbers. They had 43.4% of the energy storage batteries, uh, but that includes all the ones deployed by Tesla because mm -hmm. Tesla makes those. Uh, so, um, oh, good. Lucky me. <laughs> and then you've got um, some other interesting stuff here. Let's take a look. CATL claims new grid battery will experience no degradation in the first five years. And as I recall, they've put a warranty on to match. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's, you know, that's the thing. People are just not yet grasping is that battery technology will continue to improve, will continue to improve. And this is why electric vehicles are not only at par, they're going to be a lot uh, lower cost because you've hit your maximum on what you can do with the you know combustion engine, but batteries will continue to improve. And so these... It's just fantastic to continue to see this. We'll see more and more. That is correct. Uh, 
busy with two major announcements in April, uh, a new electric vehicle battery pack with a 15 year warranty and a long duration stationary battery meant to deliver zero degradation, 15 years, 15 year auto warranty on the battery is amazing. But anyone who's been following the progress with LFP batteries, the lithium mm -hmm. iron phosphate over the last few years, uh, knows that Jeff Don's lab has not just tested them to a million, but 4 million miles in equivalent charge cycles. Now that is in the lab, so it doesn't necessarily account for right. uh, weather, for temperature changes, but these are something that they're able to offer. Even though they don't make the cars, they can make, they can put their own warranty on the battery over and above. So this is, this is an exciting time for consumers, I would say. And just recently there was a day in California where the, yes, where the grid storage handled all of the, of the backup power needs for the day. And that's a milestone and we'll see more and more of that. Brian, what, what did you take of the comments on the earnings call that Elon was saying that, um, you know, that the 4680 batteries, it's important, but it's not a top priority at this point. It's interesting. I took it to mean we're doing our best but we know that we have to have a, a plans B, C, and D. And if we've learned one thing about Tesla over the course of the last three, four years through the pandemic, we got to see their backup plans are better than most manufacturers' primary plans. They got through the chip shortage by writing new firmware for all different kinds of chips, things that they never planned to use, and they came out stronger for it. They found, you know what, we were using two different low-voltage controllers, now we're just using one. Or they might have simplified from three to one by using a slightly different chip. Uh, so I think that they would, I'm sure they would prefer to already be using 4680 in everything. But as that now, ramp I, catches up. Didn't we already talk about this, right? That because the other automakers pulled back on their plans for electric vehicles, this made a lot of more batteries available and they can get it at lower cost and the prices that continue to fall. And so for them, it's like, yes, 4680 is important going to do a lot but we, it's not like it's it's going to leave us in a dust at this point we've got this the, the world and batteries had changed in the last year yes and certainly since battery day lfp batteries just keep getting better you're able to make there was a time when the idea of an lfp in a tesla vehicle would have been kind of crazy but it wasn't very long until shanghai started making cars with lfp batteries because they were good enough they were already there they're a little heavier it does take up the entire uh, space that a battery would go in whereas a short range might have used only two-thirds of the space but we have the space we can put it in there and get it to work and so you'll see all kinds of different approaches depending on what's available and tesla brilliantly is mm -hmm. brand agnostic form factor agnostic and chemistry agnostic juice is juice juice so is juice <laughs> it's juice that's all it is so then you've got um, yeah this is catl's very very fancy page where it shows just mm -hmm. some of what they're working on do you think that this is competition or just uh more or do you think the pie is so big still? That's what I just said. Yeah, yeah the pie it'll is be massive. it'll be ten years, I think, before the idea of competition even comes into play. Every business, every company, a country will need to create. Um, they'll need to buy mega packs. They'll need to buy enough of this. It's just not going to be enough in time. Every data warehouse. We, you and I have talked about this already a few times that Amazon bought a data center that's in the same you know vicinity as a nuclear power plant. That's what they need to do now because data centers, at some point, they can't have it all in one location because it, it it will pull down, it'll take down the energy grid for a state. And so they need to create these things, have it distributed multiple states. That's, that's how much energy that they take and that they'll require. Now, there is also uh, BYD who is also getting into this business. Yep. It's and have been in this business. Yes. And if BYD... If their cells are good enough for Tesla, then Tesla will buy them as well, I am sure. So this means, because I've seen people say, this is the competition that will destroy the mega pack. And I <laughs> disagree because not no. only is the pie too large for any company to own, if uh, 
you and I go out to bid on the same project, but either way, I'm going to be buying your supplies to fill the order. Either way, you win. Whether mm -hmm. Tesla gets the contract or CATL does, CATL still wins. They still sell the cells. So it is a partnership that stands to let everyone be the victor. I think that's the important part. I think that's the big takeaway. And I'd love to hear in the comments if you guys think uh, we got this one right or if we completely missed the mark. I love hearing from you guys, especially when uh, you tell me all the reasons I've lost my mind. I don't think I have on this one. I think Herbert and I've got this pretty dialed in, but you'll have to let us know. Uh, what did we miss? What do we misunderstand? Uh, leave a comment, like, subscribe, smash your own thumb. I don't know what you're doing. It's none of my business, <laughs> but whatever you do, stay tuned, stay juicy. And I cannot wait to hear from you clever robots on the flippity flip.